As soon as we see a string connecting two objects, we often think that we are going to use small Tinian's equation. But in this problem, that is actually not the case. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening. So the first question, 5.1, we just stated Newton's first law of motion in words. Well, a body will remain in a state of rest or motion at constant velocity unless it is acted upon by a non-zero resultant force. That is 5.1, quick and easy. Let's take a look at 5.2, the free body diagram for block B. This is out of 5 marks. So we are expecting our free body diagram to have 5 forces. So let's go ahead and take a look. First things first, before we start thinking about anything else, we have the weight. So let's just go ahead and have that. So there we go. We have the weight of the object. That is block B. And then it is resting on the surface, as you can clearly see from our sketch. So we have the normal force perpendicular to the surface. So maybe something like this. So there we go. We have our normal force. There is a force F that is applied on the object. So we have our force F. And then now we need two more. A and B are connected by a light inextensible string. So we have our tension force pointing down the slope. There's friction between the blocks and the surface. So we also have our frictional force. So there we go. The weight, the force applied, the normal force, the tension, and the frictional force. For the tension and the frictional force, the order doesn't matter because at this point, we don't know which is greater than which. We don't know whether the tension force is greater than the frictional force or vice versa. So, however, whatever order you use, you're going to get all five marks. So, that is 5.2. Let's go ahead and take a look at 5.3. So, 5.3 calculate the normal force acting on block b the normal force on an inclined surface is given by mg cos of theta so the mass is for block b it is 8 kgs is given to us right here 8 kgs for block b and 10 kgs for block a so we have 8 kgs for block b multiplied by the gravitational acceleration which is 9.8 cos of the angle given 15 degrees so cos of 15 degrees now it's just a matter of putting that in our calculators and we get 75.72 newtons perpendicular to the incline right perpendicular to the incline we have to recall that normal force, well, it's a force, so it is a vector and not a scalar. That's why we have the magnitude and the direction, right? 5.3.1, nothing complicated. If you don't know where this is coming from, then go ahead and watch my video on how to calculate the normal force in different circumstances. That is 5.3.1. Let's go ahead and take a look at 5.3.2. We want the tension in the string. Let's go back to our free body diagram. Well, this free body diagram is for block B. If we wanted to use block B, we would have a problem because we don't have the force applied. Okay, if we have the force applied, it will be easy to calculate the tension using block B. But we don't have the force applied. So we can't use block B to calculate the tension. Let's go ahead and see if we can use block A. So for block A, uh, the free body diagram, uh, let me just draw it real quick. The free body diagram for block A, we have the weight, obviously. We have the normal force and the tension. We have the frictional force down the incline but we need to also recall that we have 
the parallel component of the weight which is acting down the incline so we have weight parallel okay so if we were to use block a take a look at our equation statement a force f moves the blocks up the incline at a constant velocity constant velocity tells us that frictional force plus a weight parallel is equal to the tension that's what constant velocity tells us so we can say that the frictional force plus the parallel component of the weight will be equal to the tension so the frictional force what is the frictional force we are given the frictional force that block a experiences it is said to be 29.88 newtons so we're gonna have 29.88 newtons plus the parallel component of the weight it is mg sine of theta so it is 10 multiplied by 9.8 sine of 15 degrees the angle right this is equal to the tension if you put that in your calculator you will get 55.24 newtons up the incline we have the magnitude and the direction this is our tension force now that we have our tension force we can calculate the force f applied on our object b let's go ahead and take a look at how that will turn out again revisiting the free body diagram we have the force applied being equals to the tension plus the frictional force plus the parallel component of the weight so what are we saying we're saying that for block b the force is equals to the frictional force plus the tension plus the weight the parallel component of the weight so the frictional force it is not given to us in this case we are given the coefficient we are given the frictional force for block a for block b we are given the coefficient so we have to calculate it ourselves we've already calculated the normal force on block b so we just multiply that by the coefficient to find the frictional force so the coefficient is 0.31 and the normal force is 75.72 so we're gonna have 75.72 plus the tension 55.24 plus the parallel component of the weight do we have the parallel component of the weight for block b uh, it seems like we don't but we can easily calculate it so the mass is 8 kgs the gravitational acceleration is 9.8 the parallel component is sine of 15. the force applied is 99 newtons there we go